are watching Southland TV. I am Renee Tabor, host of Metamorphosis. Welcome to the Southland TV Green Room. We have here our guest, Gia Clare. Welcome, Gia. Hi, thanks for having me. We thank you for being here today. Gia is a motivational speaker, as well as a coach, as well as a stand-up comedian. And so I want to ask you some questions about what you do. I think sure. it's amazing, and I understand you need to get out there and you need to do multiple avenues to get your name out. What do you like the most about what you're doing <clears throat> in your career? Well, I love that it all is who I am. So it's not like I'm putting on different hats. It's all the same me. You know, we were just laughing a minute ago because comedy is something that is healing. Um, as well as motivational speaking, and both of them are fun, they're both entertaining, and I feel like, uh, well, somebody asked me once, when you're doing motivational speaking, you're doing comedy to make people laugh, but then they said, when you're doing comedy, do you motivate people? I'm like, no, no, I, I draw the line on that, I don't try to make comedy funny, but, so I think um, that it's all me, it's just different phases and different ways to express myself. What came first, the comedy or the motivational speaking? Well, the writing came first as a, as a method of expressing and healing, and then that really was a catalyst to put me into motivational speaking because everybody thought I had the answers. I was like, what? I'm still <laughs> figuring stuff out, but I guess I had a way of allowing people to, uh, to follow what I was learning, so that came first. So it really was a matter of leading other people through a valley, it sounds like. Yeah, and then, and then I actually got dared to do comedy. I, someone was like, you're funny, you should do comedy. I was like, what? And then in a matter of like two weeks, three people, same, same thing. They're like, you should do stand-up comedy, and I did it. And I was like, oh, just do it one time, and then I'll be done. And then I kept getting asked back. So, do you yeah. find that that's demanding, trying to be funny, or do you how how hard do you try to be funny? Not at all. I think if n not at all. If I try to be funny, I probably wouldn't. Right. Um, writing the material, there's an art to it. It's a craft. It's you know, people who are funny doesn't just mean you're good on stage. Because there's a craft to it. There's a setup and a punchline, and then there's all sort of content. But inherently, you have to have uh, a sense of reading the crowd, understanding when to shift and flow with the direction of what's going on with your material, and, and then having fun. So um, I don't find it hard. Was that the question? Was it hard? It, it was, it was it close enough. Oh, <laughs> trying to I don't try deliver to be funny. on being funny. Yeah, I don't try to, no. Mm -hmm. Because I've seen you in, in your speeches and your presentations, and you do infuse humor, but people are inspired at the end. Yes. And that is an extreme value, because yes. to your point, if you, try to, if you try to be funny, if you try to motivate, that typically will backfire. It is about the audience yeah. and knowing where they're coming from. Let me ask you this, Gia. I know that you wrote a book, and you mentioned about the healing process. Mm -hmm. And so, how did you come, there is a dark side to motivation that not a lot of people, I think, consider, sure. and that dark side of motivation is experience. So what is your experience that led you to be where you are? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's usually a, a collection of moments, right, that, that lead you to a place of going, you know what, I think I'm healing myself, and I think maybe I should share this. So, you know, I... Uh, I went through a life change, I went through a divorce, you know, that's how we met, and, um, you know, when is that ever pleasant, right, and it, it, I went through some dark times there, and then, you know, a lot of people think, I'll get the divorce and I'm free of my problems, but there's a whole set of other problems, and, and, and that book was just a journey through what's next, and I'm in a lot of pain, I don't know what I'm doing, but I know that I, if I write, I express myself and I feel good, and so... Um, that was the beginning of that, but then also some life experiences that I've had that um, have made me feel not worthy, um, I'm not deserving of good things, um, that I, I wasn't really anything special, um, kind of be ashamed of who I was, and that those experiences, I didn't like the way any of that felt, and I didn't believe it, and I, I thought, and as I met more women, I was like, you know, there's a lot of women who feel this way, and that's nuts. That's right. unacceptable, you know, so then I just stepped up and started helping in any way that I could uh, because I felt I had something to share. So. There's an extreme value in that as well, though, because there are a lot of people who go through 
that valley, right? right? And they don't know, A, how to get out of it themselves, or right. B, how to help others through that process. Right. And so I, I appreciate you and what you've done and getting up in front of people because not everybody is willing to show that they're vulnerable. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think I think that takes a strength that many people are still fearful of. Sure. And so I know that you wrote a book. Yep. Your book was called Head First yep. and it is completely sold out, right? Yeah. It's been a, it's I that was I mean, I wrote it eight years ago. Okay. Um, I'm on the next phase of life and book, and uh, so that was the beginning of the journey, yes. Can you talk to me about your new book? Yeah, it's called Thinking It Is Given, and so the first book was about, like, uh, it was a fun story, you know, laughter, tears, sex in the city meets eat, pray, love, and just explodes. <laughs> um, but then I realized, like, I do, I did heal myself. I poured myself into self-development, and... You know, if I would read one book and they would mention three teachers, I would read those three teachers' works. And then if I saw a video and then I just, I'm obsessed with personal power, knowing that I am in control. You're not, you're not, you're not, but I'm going to do this myself. And I don't need anyone to approve, to validate, to agree. No, it's all about me. And so pouring myself into that, I was like, wait, I, and I love the stage. Like, it's no, I mean, I love I think the comedy has taught me to have a fearless mentality, and I think that that, and, and I love making people laugh, because when you make people laugh, you know, ha is actually the sound of, vib it's the vibration of love, 578 hertz. So there's a real science to it. So when you make people laugh, they leave their crap at the door, and now you have them in a, in a state of learning. So there's, it's actually quite intentional to get people to laugh in the beginning, and right. they're kind of relaxed. Um, but knowing that I could heal myself, that, you know, my purpose is to then not just heal, but help. Like, let's, you don't have to read the books. I did it. So if you can just trust me, just do what I say because I know that it works. And it's not my opinion. It's the opinion of all the great teachers that have gone before us. And I'm obsessed with it. I read constantly. That is awesome. Yeah. What yeah. is your favorite topic to read? And there are many different facets and stuff. Yeah. Right? Well, that's a great question. Um, there's a whole series of mystics like Neville Goddard, um, U.S.L. Anderson. Um, I love Neville Goddard, it's probably one of my favorite. He wrote a book, The Power of Awareness, and people say, gee, what should I read? Depending on where they are, that's one book I start them with or three magic words, and they're very mystical books. But because, you know, law of attraction, right, that's, that's the, the basis of a lot of the teaching, and there's, it's not new information, but I look at it from a mystical perspective, uh, you know, the uh, metaphysical piece, mm -hmm. but then there's the spiritual piece, there's the science piece, so I know biologically what's happening, and there's a religion component. Um, so it's all those facets together. So when I speak, it's not just metaphysics. It's about, here's the science of it. Here's the biology of it. Which one do you want to realize that it's true? Because I got it, you know. So. And you do a lot of coaching, correct? That's yes. your primary business. Yes. As well as presentations. Yes. What can you say, you, you touched on a point earlier about many women adopting this feeling of unworthiness, yes. so to speak, and that's my own verbiage, but that is something that is very prominent, not just women, but people in it's, general right. are very fear-based. Yes. Right. So what can you say to perhaps our viewers that are in a situation where they are operating in a fear-based yeah. mentality? Yeah. What would you coach them or advise them to do? Well, I do coaching. It's called leadership living because I'm, my career, my 20-year career, Incorporation has taught me um, that I have a powerful leadership presence, but that leadership is an all-time thing, not a sometime thing, right? Mm -hmm. So and my son is 16. He's a leader, right? Um, if you train people, they're, they're better at home. They're better at work. Um, when you're stuck in that valley, um, the, the biggest thing is to not try to do anything. Don't solve anything. Like if you're, if you're in a valley about I'm broke, I don't have money, I don't have this, I, I don't have... You can't fix it in the valley, Right, um, you can't operate out of fear. It will never work out right. You might get a short win, but then it's always going to come back to the same spiral. So, the quickest thing is to shift from fearful place to a place of love. And so, you know, there's that scale, and everything comes out of those two emotions. The whole, you know, our entire soul has two languages: it's love or fear. Right, and so, the quickest thing to do is to shift from fear to love. And I tell people there's two immediate ways to do that, and Number one would be to use gratitude. 
Um, because if you're breathing and you can look <laughs> up, you can look around, you have something, and I'm not trying to sound like it's so easy, but you have a lot to be grateful for that you don't think about. So you can focus on gratitude. You know, write it down, write it down, gratitude. And just keep doing it because if you keep doing it, if you hold a the gratitude thought for 17 seconds, it connects times four. 17, 17, 17, 17. It will start to create a universal shift. It absolutely is proven, right? So you just have to hold it for a little bit. <laughs> genuinely feel gratitude. The second way would be affirmations. And affirmations don't make it so. It's like, I'm thin. Poof. <laughs> no, it doesn't. But it allows it in. If you can say it and speak to it first, then you can begin to, okay, it's possible. Then you can slowly move. So those are two immediate ways if you're stuck in that space. But really, the leadership living, when I coach, it's really a seven-pillar process, which I won't go into. But there's, you know, a process of making it permanent. So I'm not just fixed right now. I'm going to be fixed. So that if I get in that valley again, I don't even need to call Gia, but I probably will because she's so fun. I want to reach out to her and say hi. <laughs> But I know how to turn that boat around myself. And if you can just do that in life, you're good. That's it. Problem train. solved. <laughs> <laughs> what else we got? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And now you also, on, on Facebook, I see quite frequently you do your I am statements. Yes. And I love those because it just creates a sense of peace on this otherwise chaotic yes. social wall. Yeah. Can you... And today, and perhaps share some I am statement ideas that people can use? Yes. Um, I got a tattoo right here. It says, I am. That's mm -hmm. my daily reminder. Um, so, I am that, comma, I am, is actually um, the most powerful statement. And how you finish your I am's is really declarative of your life. So, you know, wait, the, the, most, the two most important times of day to do this would be uh, upon sleeping. Because if you set your tongue with your I am's, and, and I don't care if you believe it or not, that's the thing. It's the, the subconscious mind is the bigger piece. The conscious mind is what you take in right here. But what you plant in the subconscious mind, it doesn't know if it's real or not. So why don't you just tell it what you desire, right? So um, I'm powerful, I'm strong. Whatever the words are for you, they have to be powerful words and not negative ones like, you know, I am, th I am thin because I'm tired of being fat. Just leave that part off. Leave that part off. And before you go to sleep, just trail off into your IMs. Maybe get a journal. I'm a big fan of journal at night. And then in the morning, and, and just say, I'm thankful because I am that I am. You know. And then when you wake up, before your feet hit the ground, you go into your IMs. And again, no matter what you see in front of you, you have to tell the story above that, which is your spiritual eyes, your eyes of faith, your eyes that you know who you really are. And then no matter what you see in front, you keep affirming your I am's. And put them on a note card and carry them with you, you know, um, and look at them two, three times a day and then bedtime and morning. Your life will shift if you do that. It's, it's impossible for it not to. It and again, shift. it's revisiting that attitude of gratitude that you were just talking yeah, about. Yeah, stay in gratitude and have your I am's. Now, there's more to it. Sometimes we have such programmed, limited beliefs. Uh, you know, we picked them up when we were kids. Our parents were like, hey, thank you, God. We'll figure it out. And then, like... That didn't work out so well, you know. But, but they, they do it with the best intention, you know. I'm, I'm probably screwing my kid up right now, too. No, I'm kidding. I'm not. I'm not. But we do the best we can. But still, culturally, familial-wise, and our society puts all these things, they're called memes, right? right? And we can change them because a belief is just something that you think over and over. It's nothing magical. It's just a thought that you've been planted and it keeps thinking it. So guess what? If you don't like that, change it. Find another one. That's it. It was very simple. Right. So, thank you so much again. Thanks to our guest, Gia Claire, here in Southland TV Studios. Thank you.